One of the biggest economic engines of the Philippine economy is largely due to its large foreign reserves. The Philippines, according to the latest World Bank data published for the year 2021, has shown that the country has about 108 billion US dollars in total reserves. At this size, it makes the Philippines one of the largest in the entire Asian continent. However, at the same time, this figure is often the center of several debates. On the one hand, people claim that it is very low, and they would go on to compare this figure to countries like Japan or China. But if we even take a look closer at its neighboring bloc known as Southeast Asia, countries like Malaysia, Thailand, and Indonesia have higher reserves than the Philippines. Thailand, for instance, even has over $246 billion in foreign reserves, which is more more than double that of the Philippines. However, despite being a lagging country, as some have stated, there are still arguments that go into play while the Philippines has an adequate amount of foreign reserves, which are vastly underappreciated. And here's why. The basis on how we should form this debate should not just be about the number of foreign reserves a country has. Having a large number of foreign reserves is indeed important, but it does not cover the adequacy in the face of external shocks. This is one of the the most important factors in determining how big a country's foreign reserves are, one that is often misunderstood and missed out on when citizens talk about it. This is also a big part of why the Philippines is not at risk for territories when it comes to foreign debt. People say that the country owes too much money to foreign lenders such as China or even at times Japan, yet they forget that the country also has a big amount of foreign reserves, adequately enough compared to its foreign debts. But to truly understand how important the Philippines' foreign reserves are, you must first take a look at the first key data point. According to the World Bank's 2021 data, which shows what is known as the total reserves in months of imports, meaning how much reserves a country has relative to its imports, shows that the Philippines has the highest in all of Southeast Asia's biggest economies. As of the 2021 data, the Philippines has about 10 months of total reserves in months of imports. Thailand, for instance, has only about 9 months of total reserves in months of imports, whereas even Vietnam only had four months. This is also a necessary data point that showcases how much the Philippines can absorb in the case of a downturn. For instance, we have seen several commodity shocks in recent months where oil and gas had seen prices skyrocket. This has caused a strain on Philippine importation, but it was adequately met due to considerable foreign reserves. Furthermore, imports aside, another key aspect that shows how robust the country's foreign reserves are is due to external debt. The dataset of the World Bank, which calculates the total reserves as a percentage of external debt, is the second factor here. Because foreign reserves are also what is being used to pay the external debt. You borrow in US dollars, you pay in US dollars. The risks here are likely disastrous. Foreign debt has crumbled several economies globally. Globally. The Philippines crisis in the early 1980s was even a historical case related to its foreign debt. Therefore, the need to have larger foreign reserves over its external debt is necessary. As of 2021, the Philippines has about 102.2% of total reserves as a percentage of external debt, higher than both Vietnam and Indonesia and only behind Thailand. This is an important factor in understanding that the Philippines is actually in a better position when it comes to adequacy in foreign reserves. It is also worth noting that foreign reserves play a crucial factor in a country. The larger it is, especially compared to its foreign debts and imports, may suggest that the country can be more stable. There were more than several cases in history other than the 1980s of the Philippines crisis that caused a downturn of events when it comes to foreign reserves. One very big example is the 1997 Asian financial crisis, where economies from both regional blocs of Southeast and East Asia saw tremendous capital outflows. 
This wrecked governments, two private corporations, declaring bankruptcies, and financial institutions because their foreign reserves had gone empty. This led the likes of the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank to issue tens of billions of dollars of emergency loans just to make sure they survive. Moreover, one can also see that having such high foreign reserves is also important for both investor confidence and credit worthiness. The latest S&P credit rating for instance, sees that the Philippines has a rating of triple B+, which makes the country's rating higher than Indonesia and Vietnam, and on the same course as Thailand. It is even higher than other newly industrialized countries, such as Mexico, South Africa, and Brazil. And despite these, it is regrettable that Filipinos have misunderstood how big the Philippines' foreign reserves are. A big misconception related to the country's foreign reserves is about the Philippine trade industry. Many people know that it is a disaster. The Philippines imports more than it exports. For context, in 2022, the Philippines had a trade deficit of more than 50 billion US dollars. This suggests that the Philippines imported more goods than it exported, which is a bad sign indeed. However, it is also worth noting that despite the country's bad trade deficit, which is not limited to 2022 alone but has occurred several times in the past decades, still saw the overall balance of payment, which is a concept that calculates the inflow and outflow of money, is overall positive. That is why the Philippines, even despite having a trade deficit of billions of dollars, has still seen a continued increase in foreign reserves. There are big players in the entire balance of payment industry of the Philippines that have helped push the country's overall foreign reserves accumulation. Factors are all but forgotten, as most people often only focus on merchandise trade. For instance, the Philippines is a big player in the entire business process outsourcing hub. The Philippines, even though it imports more goods than exports, actually exports more services than imports. Indeed, a huge part of all of these is due to the call center industry, which has garnered billions of dollars every single year in foreign inflows. According to the latest data published by the Central Bank of the Philippines, in the first nine months of 2022, the service surplus recorded about $10 billion. Not enough to, of course, cover the big deficit in merchandise trade, but it is a big factor on top of another big factor. The other factor in helping the balance of payment is through the recipients of overseas Filipino remittances, which as of 2021 are estimated to be $36.1 billion. Other factors are also at play in the industry other than OFW and BPOs. We can also say and be thankful for the prudent monetary policy adopted by the Central Bank of the Philippines. This policy has helped manage capital flows and eventually the buildup of foreign reserves. This is likewise a huge part when we talk about the entire foreign reserves of the Philippines. These factors, from service exports to overseas Filipino workers' remittances, have helped not only alleviate the burden of having a big merchandise trade deficit, but also help increase the overall foreign reserves of the Philippines to where it is today, at a level that has arguably made the country's overall economic positioning to external shocks safer. But this is not to claim that the Philippines should focus on where it is today. Of course, the Philippines must fix its merchandise deficit. It cannot solely rely on services and remittances forever. But it is a video that states that despite most people's claim that the Philippines is in a terrible position due to its lack of exports is entirely a one-sided view and must take into consideration the fact that there are also other factors playing within the Philippine economic landscape. And finally, while these data points from the World Bank show that the Philippines is indeed ahead against most of its Southeast Asian peers when it comes to external shocks, it is also not limited to its neighboring bloc alone. Comparatively, the Philippines, as of 2021, has a higher level than other newly industrialized countries such as Mexico, Turkey, 
South Africa, and even a developed country such as South Korea. Likewise, this video is also not to claim that the Philippines has a higher foreign reserve, but to stress the importance of being safer from external shocks. But anyway, do let us know what you think. Why do you think the Philippines has a higher foreign reserve? Or let us know why you think we are wrong and why the Philippines are actually in a bad position. Thanks for watching.